Hey everybody and welcome back to It's Only Food with Chef John Polite. Today we are going to be showing you how to make corn chowder. Cue the music. Well, thanks a lot for watching. If this is your first time watching, please do me a favor, go down to the corner, hit that subscribe button, and then hit that notification bell to be notified each and every time I upload new content. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for watching. I know you clicked on my face to have me show you how to make corn chowder. So let's head into our kitchen here and see what our ingredients are. All right, we got about two carrots, we got one onion, we have two stalks of celery, one red pepper, half a bag of frozen corn, half a pound of butter, two cups of all-purpose flour, one pint of heavy whipping cream, a tablespoon of chicken base, four baked potatoes, I've got paprika, fresh rosemary, cracked black pepper, salt, and a bay leaf or two in there to give it some flavor. So let's head into our prep area and start doing it up. All right, first thing we're gonna do, I have taken the liberty of washing all the celery the peppers, the carrots, and the onion, just to make this a seamless video. But we're gonna make our mirepoix, which is gonna be our carrots, celery, onions, and pepper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start slicing, cutting this up. With our carrots first, and our onion. We got celery here. I've actually got a video on how to make mirepoix. I'll put a card right here. You can go ahead and check that out. And then we got our pepper here. This is for flavor and it's also for some color. So I'm going to finish dicing this up. Alright, well there's our bowl full of our diced um, peppers, carrots, onions, and celery that we're going to use for our mirepoix. I like a larger cut on mine for the mirepoix because remember we're developing flavor here. Uh, it doesn't matter how big or small the mirepoix is. I do like to have a larger sized mirepoix because I like it to be identifiable in the soup that I'm making so it's not just one main player in the soup. You'll be able to see all the characters in there. So these are all cut about the same size. Now I'm gonna move on to our potatoes. Now I got four of these, I've already baked them off in the oven, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them into small diced chunks. And they might break up, they may or may not break up when we go to start whipping up the soup and stirring it up. They will break down as they cook as well, but they are already fully cooked, washed, and I'm leaving the skins on because that helps not only thicken the soup, but adds a little bit of a character to the soup as well. Let me finish these up. There we go, we got our mirepoix all cut and ready to go. And we have our potatoes diced and ready to go into the soup. Let's move over to our big pot and start cooking our soup. All right, got our butter partially melted there, got a medium high heat. I'm gonna go ahead and add our mirepoix into here. And we're gonna start sweating these vegetables down. Vegetables are sweating rather nicely. I want to get them to where the carrots are soft in there and the color of the, the Celery will change a little bit as well and the onions become translucent I want to do that before I do the next step because I want to make sure that the vegetables are cooked and soft because it's in a soup All right onions are translucent color is changing on the celery The carrots are most likely soft. I can see the difference in the color too, so that probably means that they are, so that means that they are getting softer because the sugars are coming out. Now, I'm going to add our garlic in here with my handy dandy garlic squeezer. Whoop. You don't want to add that garlic too soon because it can get uh, cooked at a high temp there with the other aromatics get a little rancid so I'd like to add it in to the butter halfway through the point and then I got the rosemary too I'm just gonna throw that right in there as well now if you're using powdered garlic and powdered rosemary or in a bottle it's okay it's gonna have the same kind of in flavor intensity if you want to perfume it in that fat or the butter and that will help don't add it at the end hit it in the in the butter to uh, bloom those flavors out. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just gonna stir these all up and we're gonna add our potatoes. And just 
just kind of let all these flavors get together and marry and get hot. Put the lid back on, let it cook a little. All right, everything's hot. Everything has been introduced to each other in the pot. Now we're going to add our flour and we're going to do this to thicken what's going to be our chowder. And we're using the Singer method. We are making a roux, but we are using the Singer method to do so as if we are not making a roux on the side with the fat and the flour and then adding it to our cum. Adding it to our dish, we are actually incorporating the roux in the dish as we cook it. That is called the Singer method. And you see our potatoes are kind of mashing up a little bit as well. You we just want to cook this roux off a little bit. We want to keep it a blonde roux because I want the nice color in there. I want the nice blonde color in there for the, our chowder. But I'm going to go ahead and, well, we don't need to cover it up now. So I'm just going to let this kind of brown on all sides. I'm going to stir it until it's, it kind of cooks the roux a bit. And then we'll add our whipping cream. Yeah, I forgot to add the bay leaf. I'll add it now. Add your bay leaf in when you add your rosemary. Sorry about that, folks. Make sure you don't hold your towel too close to the burner or it will catch fire. All right, now the heavy whipping cream is going in now. We may need to add a little bit of water in this as well. We will see that once we get this almost finished. We're going to be adding frozen corn to that. So it's going to bring the temperature down and also add a little bit of liquid to it. Yeah, we're going to need to add liquid, I can tell. But we got a nice base here to this, which brings me to our next step, our base. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of the chicken base in there. Because remember, if you don't have that foundation of this dish, with the base, you're just putting seasonings in a bowl of water, and we don't want to do that. We're actually building flavors. This is sequential cooking, so all that does is bring out everything else in the dish and help it along with the flavor building. So it's kind of why it's called a base. Otherwise, you're just putting seasonings in a pot of water and boiling it. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. And I will add this to the description box as well that has the recipe in below. And it's going to continue to thicken as it cooks. So we want to make sure that we... I'm going to add just a little bit more water and I'm going to add the corn first though. I'm going to add the corn now because it's a 10 ounce bag of this roasted corn that I found. I'll go ahead and stir that in. We have our base. Let's see if I have any. Okay, now I'm gonna, now that I have the corn in, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of paprika. And I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper to give it a little bit of heat and smokiness to counteract the sweetness of that corn. So you can adjust the flavors however you like. There's a lot of different recipes for corn chowder. Um, you can add chili seasonings and things like that, cumin, but I'm just doing the paprika just to counteract a little bit of that sugary flavor of the corn uh, and bring some smokiness to it to counterbalance. Then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of ground black pepper and some sea salt. Then I'm going to continue to stir this up. And I'm going to let that set for a minute and then we'll give it a taste here and see where we are with it. Yep, just needs to get hot now. All right, I'm gonna bring this to a boil, then we're gonna let it, I'm gonna turn that down so it simmers for a little bit. Then I'm gonna bowl this up. I'm gonna take some awesome photos of it for social media. We're gonna lay those photos into a timeline with some really groovy music, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna give this a taste. So, enjoy the music, and enjoy the
shower. It smells fantastic. I am smelling the garlic, the rosemary. I'm looking at this with all the different things in it. Corn, celery, carrots, peppers, potatoes, the rosemary leaves in there. It's just very thick and very nicely. The heavy cream gives it a nice consistency. Going in for the taste. Something about butter, heavy cream, and chicken base that just brings out wonderful flavor. Get a little bit of everything in here now. Mm -hmm. Incredible hearty chowder. I won't call it a soup because it is a chowder. Make sure you check out the description box below. It's got the recipe. And then watch this video a couple of times if you have to. to uh, learn how to make this, but sequential cooking, started with a mirepoix, worked our way up, added everything to it, built our flavors. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like this video, leave a comment below, and then share this video with everybody. Everybody that you know. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, right here on It's Only Food with Chef John Pleat. Bye-bye.